the basic norm around it is being a surgeon is difficult and being a female surgeon is even more difficult so is it true in ophthalmology and ophthalmology is a good um, uh, provides a good uh, i would say that it's a, it's one of the branches which provides good work life balance and it is surgical it's also a little medical a blend of both and we have uh, an almost equal representation of women in this field so when it comes down to work and when you say life balance what exactly do we mean matlab like from your perspective we chose by ourselves we were happy working we never thought of you know we have other life we have to enjoy that and all all was what we wanted is chances that we have to operate more we have to you know do this work more this work more and all obstetrics in india very high volume not just high volume we deal with a lot of patients and attendants who are absolutely not getting the gravity of the situation and we just feel like wo puri zimmedari of saving two lives is on yeah. us nobody is getting the gravity of it hi guys i am dr sandeep and today we have a very interesting podcast i didn't imagine myself this way but we have so we have three dynamic surgeons with us and all three of them are female and we are going to hear their story from them so we have dr sudha Dr. Oshika and Dr. Alekhya. So, ma'am, could you please introduce to our audience? I am Dr. Sudha Sitaram, and uh, I am an ophthalmologist, and I am the ophthalmology faculty on this PW Medit platform. And uh, what do you want to ask me about the life of a female surgeon? <laughs> right. So, we'll dig in with the question. the The basic norm around it is being a surgeon is difficult, and being a female surgeon is even more difficult. So, is it true in ophthalmology? being a surgeon is challenging maybe not difficult i don't think being a female makes it any more challenging as far as being an ophthalmic surgeon is concerned i think there are lots of female surgeons in ophthalmology uh, and i think most of us are doing quite well okay so is there a gender bias in ophthalmology you mean po- in a positive uh, way I, or a you, negative way for me <laughs> negative for you positive <laughs> I don't think there is uh, any bias, but uh, I would say that ophthalmic surgeries are like micro surgeries. The tissue handling is very fine. So maybe as uh, females, um, we might. Uh, ah, you you care about small small things. We get it. <laughs> yeah. we, we get it. Uh, <laughs> uh, yeah, we are gentler. Kind. We are like a little more delicate, maybe. So we find we enjoy it more. But but ma- having said that, like we have. E we have a reasonably equal number of both males and females in ophthal. So was there any specific challenge that you had to overcome being an ophthalmologist? Uh in my residency in I, general like throughout your journey. Um I had done residency from Maulana Azad Medical College and I was very blessed to have very good teachers and we had a very uh, good workload and lot of uh, surgeries uh, we got to do and we also got to see we got to do a lot of cataract and we saw a lot of specialty surgeries so our training was very good but everybody may not be that fortunate so you if you're not getting too much exposure in residency that can make you feel depressed at that stage in your life but having said that there are ways to upskill yourself ways of acquiring skills later also so it's not like um, i did not face too many challenges I so being say. a female in ophthalmology is 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 not a bad decision it's a very good decision i would say it's because a <laughs> it's a it provides it's largely an elective branch until and unless you choose uh, to be a cornea transplant surgeon or you are primarily focused on handling ophthalmic trauma most of our surgeries our procedures are elective which can be scheduled between 9 to 5 and electively according to the convenience of the patient and the surgeon so it provides a very good uh, work life balance uh, and which is uh, again i would not say it's only for females it's good for everybody so it's uh, okay so you are emphasizing men also need work life balance <laughs> and ophthalmology is a good um, uh, provides a good uh, i would say that it's a, it's one of the branches which provides good work life balance and it is surgical it's also a little medical a blend of both and we have uh, an almost equal representation of women in this field so we don't have any negative uh, gender bias at least so we can say ophthalmology is gender neutral yeah 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 Safety. certainly yeah. certainly so we'll put it that it is right so now we have dr oshika like she is the don you no know, <laughs> in the context so walk me around through this obg surgeon wala phenomena 
So, like ma'am said, we are uh, gentler surgeons, not so much in OB. Which we surgery not is gentle. not gentle, by the way? Oh, like, have you seen a cesarean section? We would have never asked this question again. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, OBG is a surgical branch. Uh, basically, in residency, mostly we are doing obstetrics. Gynecology, Metna, we don't get hands on. Uh, we're mostly assisting. Only later, when we you know, do our senior residency or go out later, do we do a little bit of gynecology. So, obstetrics, I would say uh, the surgeries uh, do not have too much of a learning curve. Uh, so, it's easy for both. Uh, like whoever does it, men, women, does not matter. Uh, and uh, I don't know, this uh, podcast is, I think, based on women empowerment, but we are like already an empowered, empowered branch. <laughs> <laughs> it is female dominated. Yeah, so, so why is, why gender bias in op- option guy? Nahi? Like, why not male? Why, why not so- male? Yeah. Okay, I think that has a lot to do with uh, what guys think rather than what the department thinks because I have had uh, male colleagues, male co residents who have been. Almost unfairly favored by <laughs> by, females, by female professors. Yes. It's, it's the other way around when you come to ortho or general surgery. <laughs> Yeah. So we would all be assisting and holding retractors for gynae surgeries and they would like, Beta, aake tu uterus nikal de. you do the hysterectomy. I'm like, what did we do wrong? No, are you painting like, you know, the grass is greener on the other side of the phenomena? I think that is always true. Yes. That's true. Uh-huh. Actually, I have a very interesting question. Uh, all these girls, no, when they are MBBS, they are all very good. They are, yeah. they, they are well behaved. Yeah. You know, they have all this, you know, nice things yeah. about Ops and gyne mein ghuste hi na, kya ho kya ja? Matlab, by the time you go into the first year, no, uh, they just get louder and louder by the every year they pass. Are you speci- me no, no. <laughs> I don't dare, I won't dare. But I just want to understand the phenomena. What went wrong in that labor room? Yeah, so uh, surprisingly, like even I get surprised if I hear a very mellow obstetrician. I'm like, she's not an obstetrician. Yeah. <laughs> so is it a criteria to shout? There is no vocal power. Yes, so I have noticed that uh, in certain branches there is a trend. For example, every derma resident I see, she's beautiful. And every obstetrician that I see, she is, uh, he or she will be loud, will be assertive, will be scary even. Yeah. So, I'll give you that. I'll give you that. <laughs> uh, and I think in part that is because of uh, how volatile the branch is. Uh, like Pam said, it's mostly an elective branch for uh, her. Uh, in residency, and that brings me to the question ki thik thak to nikalti hai NDBS se, but within one year of residency, something goes berserk. The reason for that is residency mein we are mostly dealing with obstetrics. Obstetrics in India are very high volume. Not just high volume, we deal with a lot of patients and attendants who are absolutely not getting the gravity of the situation and we just feel like wo puri zimmedari of saving two lives is on yeah. us. Nobody is getting the gravity of it. So we become a little insensitive, we become a little loud, a little scary ki uh, se kaam nahi ho rahe, thoda ke to karna padega. <laughs> so I think that is just a part of the package. Like uh, when I, I remember when I joined OBG, I was also very, uh, you know, I will not scream, I will not shout, I will not become like these obstetricians. <laughs> like? <laughs> yeah, yeah. So I was also like that. And then when I went there, I was just like, happening. <laughs> like, if you are not able to get what's happening, yeah. we can't get either. So I was like, how are these people not getting strokes on a daily basis? So Sooner or later, yeah, sooner they or later, will. Yeah. You tend to become <laughs> like that. Yeah. And uh, per se, there's a general, you know, notion towards an obstetrics ex- mm-hmm. per se, that the department is toxic. Yeah. Like, how do you define that? See, we, we've been hearing that for you know, toxicity has different types yeah. as well. So, what type of toxicity are we talking about? So, uh, toxicity is uh, very, uh, like you said, different types of toxicity. In OBG, it's very because, uh, you know, we have duties that are as long as, I think Ma'am would also yeah. know, as long as 36 hours, 48 hours. <laughs> we are in the labor room. There are places where, you know, you are having around 50 deliveries in a, you know, a day or, you know, there are colleges that have 50 deliveries in a 12 hour shift and uh, you're just standing there all day long and the next day also you have to be up. Uh, So people are already on the edge. They are uh, irritated, 
they they'll snap much easier than they would if they were well rested that is number 1 mm-hmm. number 2 is in surgical branches more than medical branches i feel like medical branches may uh, you do not depend so much on your senior for hmm. learning opportunities yeah. in surgical branches Correct. aap senior ke liye acha kaam karoge they are happy with you you will get opportunities in terms of cutting surgeries so uh that toxicity is internalized usko we don't we fail to see it as a toxicity mm, exactly so, well, exactly it feels normal that, yeah it feels normal we think like acha inhone bhi to kiya tha and they got this surgery they are doing so well now so maybe even i uh, become a slave for one or no, two years yeah it is more yeah. like a reward center yeah. trigger yeah. factor exactly. no ki ha mujhe milega to main karunga exactly. and the whole process when you look at from a neutral point yeah. it is very toxic but when you're doing it no you're yeah. doing it for a reward to lagta yeah. nahi us time pe yeah and that is why a lot of people i think that is why there is a lot of dichotomy when we talk about mental health even today in this hmm. day and age among the residents because there will be a group who will be like i am depressed and instead of empathizing with them or understanding what their situation is there will be another group who are like humne bhi to kiya tha apne time pe yeah. we have rationalized it to be all right which it is not, not it is basically ek point aata hai mujhe lagta hai and i think these are very strong words but residents in india are nothing but bandhua mazdoor correct so but you internalized it rationalized it it's okay to be a bandhu mazdoor but but don't you blame residents for that as well i'm not yeah, saying that th- they are not the only one but you look at it no yeah ma'am. yes i think to a certain extent it's the system which mm. makes them behave like that they are like helpless like 24 25 year old but then, then glorifying that you know uh, we had seniors who used to be like no if i would uh, we had a 48 hour shift after 48 hours you would ask for rest no they would be like humne kiya tha and we are still able to do it you Haan, you, so you are not made for it mm-hmm. so the minute somebody says you are not for it no yeah. because you have worked so hard to be yeah. in that position you would push yourself that Correct, extra that's wrong it, yeah. it is a mentality that really needs to change and it the change needs to come from top down yeah. at, right from the professor the level actually. they should stop glorifying yes. these insane work shifts and inhuman working conditions and saying that you will become a better surgeon or a better doctor if you go through this you had to go through a grind but the grind should not be inhuman Correct. and you cannot uh, like as she said like uh, being made to do things at the end of which there is a tiny flicker of getting a certain opportunity and for that you put yourself through this mm-hmm. uh, through this whole trauma of slavery and of these inhuman uh, work hours i don't think that's correct and the change needs to come she is very very correct and it needs to come from top, top down yeah. everybody Agreed. needs to say that yes i went through it but what i went through was wrong, wrong. and i am not going to make my junior exactly. go through it yes. that so is very very essential see my entire motive was to not do to them what i felt my seniors did wrongly to me i also had very wonderful seniors but i did have wonderful seniors who had some toxic traits and huh. yeah so, it's a mix bag yeah it's a mix bag so uh, yes so we need to stop glorifying this exploitation and Correct. i think this exploitation is the main reason why mostly you will see that uh, not just in obg but surgical branches uh, you know doctors tend to be a little brash a little uncouth more uncouth than than medical Red counterparts or you know i think it's also prevalent in like yeah. heavy like general medicine yeah. Yeah. here also where like work hours are insane patient load yeah. is and they are volatile sensitive exactly. branches you will find it but at every step we need to uh, stop this glorification of that insane old. duty hours and mm-hmm. saying that this is what is needed to make a good doctor i don't think it it's like not, that uh, making a good doctor it's making an irritated doctor that is screaming mm-hmm. at patients <laughs> yeah. getting into fights with patients yeah. Yeah. No, it's the same line of thought. Like we are not doing a desk job where you can yeah. calm your mind for a minute and then Correct. reconcentrate. You're constantly at patient. Yeah. You're listening to them. Every word is important. You're giving a suggestion, and when not every patient will like your suggestion. So there are people who will counter you. Yeah. Then you have to be cool about it. And this goes on for forty eight hours. It's not yeah. an easy job. And they are in a state of distress. Like they are not come to a shopping Correct. mall where yeah. they are happy. They have come because somebody very close to them is in a very very grave situation. 
situation. So they are already agitated. They are also, as she said, on the edge. Yeah. And you are also on the edge. So, right. So like it is a very conflicting situation. Okay. You cannot really prevent them from being on the edge. But having a doctor who's well rested and who is not like... I mean, who's not completely in control of his or her faculties because of being overworked. That conflict you have to avoid. You have to have residents who are given proper duty hours, who are well rested at the end of a normal thing. Shift, and yeah. then this this toxicity will probably go away. Correct. If it's at all it exists. It does exist in many, many branches. And when, when you see that, no, this person is being treated well, that like this toxicity culture came from from a very long time from seniors. Now, if it gets corrected, if one generation sees that, no, our DC juniors were treated well, they will also treat their juniors well and then it will go away. It's a, it's a culture that has correct, to get inculcated. Correct. correct. So, uh, we have Dr. Alekhya with us, who is our orthopedic faculty. So, let's let's hear her end of the point as well. So, how how is the whole concept of, you know, uh, female surgeon and that too in an orthopedic department is like. So till now what you have heard, uh, just imagine that one girl taking all the burden <laughs> in that male dominated field, you know. So like, you say there is a gender bias in ortho? Definitely. Why yeah, like not? I shouldn't ask yeah, that question just to get it. Not only in orthopedics. Yeah. See that is gender bias everywhere in every department it is there but in ortho it is even more. It's evident. Because, because it is a male dominated field where you see a lot of males and the, what they think in auto is the physical strength which plays the important role. Everybody has this opinion of you know only the physical strength matters which is absolutely not required. See if you are good at your techniques at your maneuvers and if you have a good teaching faculty who can teach you how to actually do that particular maneuver you know reduction or something holding the traction. If it is thought in a better way I think physical strength will be the second part. Yeah, agree. Understanding. So, but again, there here also what ma'am has explained, you no, know, the seniors and juniors, because most of the seniors would be males, and uh, teaching to a female, maybe they will they will not be comfortable because we have to hold it in a certain way, and you know they have to teach teach us in a different way, and similarly the relationship between these male colleagues will be more because they go more often outside and they. Right. They bond so well. They basically. bond well. Yeah. So these are all there in orthopedics also. And coming to work-life balance in orthopedics, so there is no such word only. It does not exist. <laughs> you choose either word, work, or you choose the life. life there is life. no work-life balance. <laughs> they are ruining my podcast. Yeah, it is only you choose either work. So your life will suffer, or you choose life, work will suffer. There are phases of it. No. According to me. Okay, let, let, let me understand this way. When you say work-life balance, like because all three of you have been married, you're surgeons, so you're balancing, you know, quite a bit. When it comes down to work and when you say life balance, what exactly do we mean like, from your perspective? That you should have uh, a sense of satisfaction in both. Like you should be happy with the amount and the type of work that you're doing. And at the same time, you should not feel uh, deprived of having a good personal life. Like you feel that you're not giving enough time to the family, to the kids. So uh, in my field, that per se is not the problem. We have, we can schedule our work and our surgeries in such a way that our personal life will not be that much affected. But having said that, she she's much younger than me. So that's why there are phases of it actually. Yeah, as you grow yeah, older, they, 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 your work-life balance kind of improves. Because as a, like, for example, it's worst in your residency. You cannot deny that. Yeah. And it is, it kind of continues uh, into your fellowship because at that time you don't have the flexibility to choose what you want to do what you don't want no, to do as you grow a little senior you uh, yes. you kind of limit yourself to a certain subspeciality to a certain subgroup of patients you uh, let go of a lot of things which you feel that you don't want to do anymore True. and then your work life balance kind of improves if you want it to improve maybe uh, intrinsically in some fields it is more but even i think in fields like obstetrics or in orthopedics after a certain stage when you limit yourself to certain subspecialities you can have a better work-life right. balance that's what great mom and so what's your take on work-life balance when it comes down to you know so for me work-life the concept of work-life balance is pretty simple uh, for me what it means is ki, okay i have to work then i have to come home and i have two sets of families now being married thankfully I don't have a kid yet. <laughs> so I don't have to do the one thing, one less thing to worry about. <laughs> <laughs> one, 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 one major one, thing. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> you guys are listening up huh? okay <laughs> so uh, yeah so i have two families to take care of and uh, so although i love being part of family i love having conversations with them and spending time with them and with my husband and everything i also do want at the end of the day a little time to myself in which i am not doing something as useless as scrolling on instagram i want to have some constructive use of that time for myself for some hobby maybe that i have that makes me feel like okay uh, you are also human yeah yeah we are also normal very dehumanized yeah yeah you know, very work. pattern so i don't want to uh, you know be like acha kaam se aaye fir ghar pe khana banaya aur ya fir khana banane ka to abhi itna hai nahi because we have maids and all of that uh, so that is not there but it's not like i don't want my mind to be always on the edge ki uh, okay check this off check this off check this off check this off and day over go to sleep hmm. that is not how i see imagine want yeah. to imagine the rest of my life being but uh, hopefully as mom said it will get better but <laughs> all the way <laughs> but you will have this come <laughs> sooner so you will understand so uh, we will uh, ask uh, alekha ma'am about the same because you have a kid also yes, and i have a kid so that is what no work life balance for resident so that doesn't exist as ma'am told we were completely into work and uh, as we chose by ourselves we were happy working we never thought of you know we have other life we have to enjoy that and all all was what we wanted is chances so we have to operate more we have to you know do this work more this work more and all uh, when i was doing my residency there were not much of you know they used to not invite me to the parties also because as again the gender bias will play the major role there i was always you know on the duty end and they all were at the party end <laughs> so it was balanced happily then there now it and, is different <laughs> <laughs> so residency wise i have no complaint because i like to work i work but once i had i got married then it was okay but once i had entered into this motherhood then the definition has completely changed so that is where i have decided to slow down for the baby as i told you that work has to suffer because my life had suffered till then so now i had given i have choose that you know the priority becomes your priority kid becomes the kid because that is the a uh, moment where my kid needs because uh, i just can't put anybody else as a mother and go for work so i have you know sacrificed maybe a good amount of one and a half year to two years for the baby and uh, luckily that time was covid uh, hit year so both of them balance, you know, yeah. got balanced <laughs> <laughs> so for two years i was with the baby and after the second year slowly i have uh, appointed a maid for her and i have requested my mother and mother in law here and then to you know just uh, to give uh, have a, a look over that maid and my kid uh, and slowly i started to get back to my work now because she's 5 years old and now she goes to school at 8:30 and comes back by 4 by then i can complete the whole work i complete my surgeries and opd then evening i try, try to spend little time with her and again we both will go to sleep like that so it is now little balanced as ma'am said it improves with time, age it, it gets better with time it gets better and better but that is where we need support from the others also the male colleagues you know the family especially the partner they have to take care of us during that uh, period of you know where we don't know what to choose the career or the baby or whatever is that you know uh, whatever that support we system choose, yeah the support system is very very important and especially the parents has to understand the maybe the uh, uh, the uh, our parents like the girl parents has to understand that they really need the help of that mother to take care of the baby at that particular time and even the seniors also just to you know make them understand that there will be a time where you will do the career thing also not always telling that if you don't operate you're gone if, because it is a surgical yeah. branch we have this you know fear of Correct. losing that hand so on that skill mm. and over and all your male colleagues will be with, by now all my male colleagues are consultants and now i'm still not a consultant and you know uh, it, it just hits you, you on that, that yeah yeah but that is i think something that happens with uh, with with not just with uh, with the surgical or any branch the moment uh, a lady takes a break for motherhood and then she comes back like we all have had that break and then when we come back we kind of see that male colleagues have moved ahead, ahead. and that is like a depressing phase yes. and especially if you're like if you've been really driven by your career the fact that you're taking a break also i don't want to sound um, i mean I, I, judgmental but at the same time the fact that you're taking a break also weighs down upon you yes. correct but then you have to i mean you chose to do it but over a period of time it kind of balances out yes. that's what i'm saying it does because it does. and this <clears throat> surgery is more of i've said it in other uh, 
uh, um, podcast also that this surgery is is a muscle memory it doesn't go away it stays it yeah it, it sticks does, it does. to you it sticks, it sticks. it's the confidence which goes down yes. if you've not been operating for a long time yeah. and then you sit with a new patient it's not that your hand is not working it is your mind which is not working okay. you feel that you won't be able to do it and the moment you uh, get into that groove and start doing it you realize that you have not forgotten and and this i'm telling from experience it, that's how it is so like that we need somebody like Sudha ma'am to tell us that it's okay to take break it and happens. come back happily. And you <laughs> will come back and it and it and over a period of time the work life balance it is a it's like this is we are in a phase of transition yes. right like where uh, we are having like when we started PG in 2008 we didn't have too many girls taking up general surgery we had but they were i would say much less in yeah. number we females would like take obg or they would take something else but they wouldn't go into general surgery now we have like so many girls taking general surgery and they are all doing well but they are also having these breaks then they come back and then they maybe it takes a little bit of a catch up time yes. but over a period of time it does, it's it a does. long journey it's a marathon yeah, it's, it's a like marathon. life is not going to end tomorrow no yeah, you take breaks start and especially again especially a medical profession is a marathon it's it's like what happens in a year a couple of years it doesn't actually it's determine true. where you'll reach it's it's a very long journey and, and why do you want to reach anywhere you just enjoy the journey you should also fix little boundaries like you should all, not always be so competitive like looking at your male colleagues like i have to be there i have to be this i have to do this it is not like that you should customize to yourself you Correct. know what is what suits you better it is not like if somebody of my friend is becoming spine surgeon i should not aim to be a spine surgeon too you have to just make it so yourself yeah, yeah. yeah. but you also you can be a spine surgeon it's not like you cannot <laughs> no, but yes, that should it's come a choice with, yeah, yeah it's it a should choice. be by choice that is what it's you a choice you cannot always compete ha uh-huh. and uh, i think that's <laughs> very true of our neat pg aspirants also that sometimes they feel very bad that my friend has taken this bra yeah. or not so i feel like i have personally tortured myself a lot by uh you know like not having a real ambition fake ambition driven by what i see around me mm. more than what is organically Actually, yeah. coming yeah, from yeah yeah coming within. from you that is true yeah so more ki i know that i am better skilled at this but oh my god other people are doing this mm. so i also need to run after that and maybe if i let go of one or two things i will be able to create better work life balance in the same job that i'm doing currently so, right so i mean like this podcast can go on for days together i mean like you know i, I personally love the way you know, things have been coming out uh, i know a lot of our listeners are also you know they've been enlightened by all your words and all so let's let's take a closing statement of tell for girls boys or for both for both <laughs> option guy ne or to Yeah, both. Yeah, they have to come forward because there are ways we can make out, you know, reach more and more surgeons, females. Ma'am, you just said to. both, and you are giving a female biased and statement. Because they still fear of because taking ortho. Yeah, she is the lone DIY artist. So it's both for all three. It's both for all. Yeah, it's only your choice. Correct. Exactly. So it's it's only driven by choice, not by compulsion. So whatever whoever tells you, if you want a particular branch, you should go for it. So thank you thank you ma'am thank you thank, thank you, you. So thank you